Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Soundbites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in El Paso, Texas, where our mission is to love God, follow Jesus, and serve others. And again, if you have any joys or prayer requests, please send them to the St. Paul's email address so that we may rejoice with you and pray with you. Now, if you would, join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your loving care and your watch care over us. Praise your name for the blessings you shower upon us each day. Now, Father, as we open our hearts to your word, we set ourselves in a position to hear from you, so speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you would, please open your Bibles to Hebrews, the ninth chapter, and we will begin today with verses 11 through 14. So Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse 11. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made, not man-made, that is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of heifers sprinkled on those who were ceremoniously unclean sanctified them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? In verse 11, the Amplified Translation reads like this, But when the appointed time came, when Christ the Messiah appeared as a high priest of the better things that have come and are to come, then through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with human hands, that is, not part of this material creation, I think that this is referring to the fact that God had established a time in the life of creation when Jesus would be born in human flesh. That is a time when God in human form would appear on, upon the earth. That is Jesus. Jesus would be the high priest of a new covenant that would be ushered in with his death and resurrection. He would be coming from a better tabernacle, not one erected by human hands, but the perfect one made by God. The old tabernacle erected by human hands and the sacrifices established by God were meant to, to help mankind live in accordance with God's law and God's love. But the sprinkling of the blood of calves and goats and bulls and the sacrificial animals could not cleanse man could only cleanse man man outwardly could not clean the man's soul or clean the man inwardly but the sacrifice of jesus freely given could cleanse our soul in our last study we went through leviticus chapter 16 which explained the function of the high priest in carrying out the sacrifices on the ritual and the ritual of the day of atonement which this had to be done annually. And I thought that it would help to further explain verses 1 through 6 and on then through chapter, through verses uh, 9 to explain those verses, which in verse 8 through 10 it stated, the Holy Spirit was showing by this that the way into the most holy place had not yet been dis disclosed as long as the tabernacle was still standing. And if you'll recall, there was and the temple set up with the Holy of Holies and, and then which is the place that the high priest went into and only after he had done certain things. And that was only done once a year. So this is the illustration for for the present time, indicating that the gifts of sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. They were only a matter of food and drink 
and various ceremonial washings, external regulations applying until the time of the new order. So I believe that this further states that the sacrificial system only cleansed the outward part of man, did not clean the soul or the inner part. This new order ushered in with the new and better covenant, as the writer is explaining in verses 11 through 14, which we just read, does uh, act to do this in a way that it would be better. So verse 12 says that Jesus did not enter the Holy of Holies by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered once and for all by his own blood, having attain, obtained eternal redemption. Jesus voluntarily went to the cross and accomplished once and forever with the shedding of his blood something that the, the shedding of the blood of animals could not do. He provided redemption for us. And verse 14 states, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, <laughs> cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God? That is what Christ our high priest did for us, as stated in verse 15, which reads, For this reason... Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from sins committed under the first covenant. As explained earlier, the sacrifices offered on the Day of Atonement could not cleanse a man forever. This had to be done on an annual basis. And this was done under the old covenant and did not necessarily reestablish a right relationship with God. So for this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant and those who receive Christ may receive the promised eternal inheritance, which includes the redemption from sins committed under the old covenant. And I think what this that means is that when we accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we receive forgiveness for all past sins. That's what the, the gospel tells us. That's what the word of God tells us, that we receive redemption from the past, all, all past sins. And then that also made provisions for us to be receive forgiveness for current sins once we recognize them and ask for forgiveness from them. Christ paved the way for us to have a right relationship with Christ, with God. And that's what all of this is intended to do, to reestablish that relationship between God and man as a loving God and a follower of him. Now let us read verses 16 through 22. In the case of a will, it is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it. But the will is in force only when somebody has died. It never takes effect while the one who made it is living. This is why even the first covenant was put into effect with blood. When Moses was proclaimed, when Moses had proclaimed every commandment of the law that to all of the people, he took the blood of calves together with water and scarlet wool and the branches of hyssop and sprinkled the scroll with all and all of the people. He said, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded for you to keep. In the same way, he sprinkled the blood with the blood, both the tabernacle and everything used in its ceremonies. In fact, the law required that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. To further explain this new covenant, I think the writer is now using a will as an example. He says that as long as the person making the will is alive, that will is not in effect and cannot be, cannot be used. That and anyone, no one can benefit from it. He goes back to the old covenant, illustrating that it was necessary to establish the covenant with the shedding of blood. That is the death of of animals 
which was not the animal's choice, but it had to be done in order to, to sanctify those things with, with the blood. Therefore, it was necessary for Jesus to die in order that the new covenant might become effective. Jesus voluntarily went to the cross. It was his own choosing to do so. The shedding of his blood, his death, then ushered in the new covenant. And this is the only way that the new covenant could become effective. Verse 23 through 28, I think, further explains the reasoning behind the writer's statement about the establishing of the new covenant. So let us read those verses. Verse 23 says, It was necessary then for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices, and that is the old covenant. The man-made copies of the heavenly covenant had to be sanctified with sacrifices. Then the next part of the verse says, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. So the new covenant would be better than the old covenant. Then verse 24 says, for Christ did not enter a man-made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. And he did that voluntarily. He went from the cross to heaven and then back to earth as he was seen then by many people before he ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of God. Now verse 25, nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way that the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. So this perfect sacrifice of Christ was once and for all, and he did not have to do that on an annual basis. One time was what it took. In verse 26, then Christ would have, if, if it had been like the old covenant, then Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But now he has appeared once and for all at the end of the age to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now I think what they're talking about there with doing away with the age was that the age of everything that took place, the Jewish people divided things into different ages and they were in the age of the current age, which this came to an end and the beginning then of the new age or the church age. Just as in verse 27, <clears throat> just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to make, way, to make a way for the sins of many people. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sins, but to bring salvation to those who are awaiting him. And I think that is referring then to his second, the second coming of Christ where he will take his people home and then will begin the thousand year millennial reign. Well, I have enjoyed sharing with you this morning and if you have any comments or different ideas about these verses, please send them to the St. Paul's email address. I would love to hear from you. And when you do this, then I will read those and, and we'll discuss them later. So I would love to hear from you. So have a wonderful time with the Lord and may the Lord continue to richly bless you. Go in peace and in the love of God.